excited to share with you starting my holiday series into the middle um, till after New Year's. We're going to be doing holiday recipes to get you ready for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. And there's my YouTubers. Thanks for joining us. I was just telling my tech talkers that we are going to be doing a holiday series between now and um, New Year's and there'll be recipes that you can use at Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, and New Year's. So I have several family favorites and tonight we are going to do carameled apples. These apples, they don't look very perfect as you can see, but they came from an orchard near me where they, oh, guys, guys, they had the best cider donuts you've ever eaten. <laughs> huh? Cider donuts that you've ever eaten. And um, I, I am currently trying to um, keep my um, sweet consumption down. <laughs> so much for that. Fall is here. Holidays are here. And my doctor's going to hate me, but we're just going to ignore her. So um, we're going to make the caramel apples and we're going to make caramel crunch. Guys, if you, even if you have self-control, this caramel crunch makes about 16 cups. And guys, you can eat it all in one sitting. I can't. And I don't even like sweets that well. I only like it in small amounts. But this is so delicious. So make sure you have bags to give it away or hide it from yourself. So let's get started. Because you may have something you want to watch on TV. So first of all, we're going to use popcorn. It needs to be popcorn that is not got butter on it. I like this one from Newman. It does really well, and it has not as many popcorn hauls. I tried to get them all out, but as everybody knows, and cranberry pinwheels, which is a great recipe for Thanksgiving, and is a huge, it's a huge, they're both huge favorites in my family. Okay, so we got our popcorn in here. Now, once again, I use, you, if you have an air popper, great, you can do it that way, but you do not want butter on it, okay? No butter. Now, you can use rice checks, but all my grocery stores around me did not have any plain. So I, I was like, caramel, chocolate. Oh, yum. So I got this one with the chocolate, and it's really, you're going to put four cups of that in. So we have eight cups of popcorn, four cups of rice checks. Um, you can use cinnamon ones too. And then you need two cups of pretzels. And I found these little guys. Look at them. Aren't they adorable? They're, they're called itty bitty minis. And so I like that. So we're going to pour those in. I'm using this stoneware bowl I have. It's by Pamper Chef. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. But this is, a, this is perfect for cooking this in. And then I'm going to add two cups of pecans. Because you can never have too many pecans. Because you got to add, you know what? This is protein, guys. This is going to compensate for all the sugar. So we're going to add that in. And then just get your hands in there and kind of toss it around, okay? Just kind of mix it. Get it tossed around. We're going to make the caramel to go on top of it. We're going to preheat our hot pre I can't talk today. We're going to preheat the oven to 300 degrees while we're doing this. So we're going to make our caramel. Caramel is very quick. We're going to move over to the stove. We're going to let my producer get the camera over here. Okay, so give me a break. <laughs> give her a break. She needs a moment, guys. Give give her a give her a break. Oh no. Uh huh. Okay, you're doing that manually. Okay, good. Okay, so we're gonna add a half a half a cup of butter. And in my okay, guys. Yesterday I spent the whole day in Salem. It was great. I had a blast. My one of my friends from Utah came in on a cruise ship, and then one of my friends from here, and we met her, and we went went to Salem, and then we just had a great time. I had so much fun, and um, I'll be going back. <laughs> it was just wonderful. So we put our butter in there, and we're gonna put a fourth of a cup of carol syrup, light carol syrup. And we're going to turn our, our burner on medium high. But if you're cooking on gas, do it medium low because medium, medium high is going to be really hot. And we're also going to add one cup of brown sugar. Now, sugar, it, I'm going to tell you something. Um, 
I taught my granddaughter this. Brown sugar is the only thing you cook with that you pack in, okay? That's the only thing. Um, white sugar isn't packed, flour is not packed, but brown sugar is always packed. So that's just a little tip there. So we're gonna mix it. We wanna bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna boil it for five minutes and then we're gonna drizzle it over the what we just mixed up and then it goes in the oven for 30 minutes and we're going to stir it halfway through. And let me tell you guys, that's fun. I usually get it everywhere. I make a horrible mess. But you know, the best food comes from that. Let me get my, look at these cute little things I got. Indigo may not be a girl. That's true, I know it's my bad. <laughs> Indigo, this is great. It's great for a party. Put it in a big bowl around the house and people just snack on it when you're having a party. This is really good for the, um, Halloween parties um any party i i can i'm i make this all the time except for in the summer because in the well let's be honest i moved and i lost the recipe and then i decided i want to make it for you guys <laughs> so i was actually up in the attic opening all my cookbook boxes <laughs> looking for my recipe because <laughs> i didn't know where i'd put it so anyway i finally found it and um so here we are so you a little tip when you're cooking sugar and corn and anything like that in butter you must stir all the time it is monotonous if you have a if you have a child that you can trust that will do it bribe them pay them if they will sit and actually stir the whole pan because you don't want it to stick to the bottom and burn because sugar will burn very quickly so you need to make sure you stir it all the time. It is not optional. If you have no desire to, for, to do that, please go to the candy store. Or bribe your neighbor. Or if you're like my family members, Kathy, you know that stuff you made the other day that I had a bite of? Could you like make me a batch of it, please? Pretty please? I'll bring you a plant. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do it for a plant. <laughs> any day i'm all about plants you should see my yard is full of plants anyway so you can see that it's starting to change a different color that means it's probably going to get close to boiling here pretty soon the butter is all melted thank you indigo for all the likes <laughs> they're spamming <laughs> thank like a, you a thousand likes on this live so far. <laughs> we love you I really, and, oh, I forgot to say, also my friend that bought me the apron, she also gave me this festive Halloween shirt, um, shirt because every year for my birthday, she gives me Halloween stuff because my birthday is the day after Halloween. And she knows I love, it's my favorite holiday. And so she gives me the cutest things. I always have li little things around the house from her. Oh, nope, nope. I have my Halloween cat trying to get up on the counter where she knows she doesn't belong, but. She really doesn't care because she's smarter than me. <laughs> she's a cat after all. Also, I was gone all day yesterday, so all my pets and those that are not mine have decided that they will make me pay today. So they have been glued to me, Velcro to me. I can't do anything. Okay, so we got this going. Guys, our color's finally coming in here. I mean, we are almost, we're halfway through October and our, we're just barely getting color on our trees. I am, I, today when I went to the grocery store because I'm brilliant me, I thought I had brown sugar. It takes light brown sugar and I only had dark. So I had to go to the store and get brown, light brown sugar. So I, the color was just gorgeous out and I just love it. Oh, uh, someone joined late. Terry is wondering uh, what is all in this mixture for the caramel. In the caramel mixture for it to go on top of the caramel crunch. Um, right now we have one cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of butter. Now that's going to be pure butter, not margarine. Margarine is mostly water, so don't use that in here. Your candy will not come out. And a quarter of a cup of light corn syrup so far. We are going to add, um, when we take it off of the burner, once it comes to a boil, we boil it for five minutes. Salted or unsalted? Salted. This is salted. Um, we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. But that is not until we remove it and right before we... Okay, I would call... 
Let me see. Yeah, I call that a boil. He said, Alexa, please. For how long? Five minutes. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Okay, this needs to boil for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Once it's boiled for five minutes, then we will take it up. Now, we are going to make caramel apples, and when we make the caramel for caramel apples, we are going to be making fancy tonight, guys. I'm feeling festive because we're fancy tonight, guys. I'm feeling festive because we're getting close to my favorite holiday, and going to Salem just made me love it more. Oh, my goodness, guys. There was so much stuff. If you ever have an opportunity to go to Salem, Mass, please do go. You will enjoy everything there. The coffee is great. The food's great. I had pizza. It was delicious. Thank you for the rose, Carrie. <laughs> thank you. It was just great. So we're going to continue. And thank you very much for the rose. I love, I love that. And we're almost, I don't know how long. This is why you set a timer. Always set a timer because if you don't set a timer, you will think you've gone five minutes when you have not. Um, so this one does not require a candy thermometer which is nice so if you don't have one this is one you can make without it you do not have to get it to a certain temperature since we're going to bake it in the oven at 300 degrees um now if you're not using a stoneware pan i forgot to cover this my stoneware pan the caramel's not going to stick to it however if you're using a regular glass pan or a metal pan you do need to spray it with or put some kind of oil on it to keep your caramel crunch from sticking while it's baking and the nice thing about this is that it just it's just a little hint of caramel it's not like it's not like you buy cracker jacks you know how sweet cracker jacks is it's not like that it's more of a mm, you know i've had a bad day i'm gonna have a bowl of caramel crunch that kind of day that kind of stuff you know or i'm gonna sit out on the porch with a cup of decaf coffee because it's I got home and it was a bad, it was a hard day and I need to watch the sunset and have some caramel crunch with coffee. Well, and you know, you can have plain coffee or add your Kahlua, whichever makes, floats your boat. I mean, coffee's good no matter how you drink it. So we're getting close. You can tell it's starting to get thick. So that means our time is almost up. You want to see how much time we have left? Alexa, how much time on the timer? Yeah, we have two more minutes. So I'm usually am a dexter. I usually will. I forgot to get my pot holder over there. So I'm going to stir while I move my pot holder. It pays to be tall when you have, when you're in a kitchen and you need to move things around and keep stirring. Although I'm not as tall as I used to be, guys. I tell you that thing about you shrink as you get older is no joke. It is no joke. I used to be able to reach my um, cupboard to get put my get my thing down to keep my tortillas hot. I have to get a freaking ladder now. That's ridiculous. What? That's not right. You should you should not get shorter. <laughs> I hate it. Plus, I'm not I'm not very steady on on ladders, guys. My kids come in and see me on a ladder, and my husband are like, "Get off the ladder." <laughs> Because I'm not very stable. I had a total knee replacement about a year and a half ago. And I just have never regained really good balance since I got that done. And so they are not happy with me when they find me on a ladder. And I'm very stubborn. I like to do things myself. So you can kind of see. See how the color starting to change. Get and stickier and thicker. Gets thicker, stickier. Gets a different. It gets that caramel look to it instead of the butter sugar and also doing this you want to make sure you do this keep stirring it because it also keeps your sugar from crystallizing in here i'm going to give you a tip on how to make caramel without granule making it granular this caramel is not going to turn granular because of the way we're cooking it to the end but when you make regular caramel there is some tips to avoid making it grainy so what's what is this what type of caramel is this if this is not regular caramel um well, you couldn't coat your caramel apples with this. It wouldn't stay on. It's meant to bake. Oh. It has, um, it's going to have baking soda in it. It has less ingredients, less butter, less everything. The ratios are not the same. So it's not a true caramel? No, it's like caramel corn is not like uh, the caramels that you buy, the squares. Okay, there's our timer. Alexa, stop. 
Let's get our little things, our little cute little holders. By the way, I got these from Pampered Shop and I love them. Thank you to my friend that had a, oh, runaway vanilla. Hold on, guys. I threw the vanilla across the room. I'm dangerous in the kitchen. Okay, we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Of course, this is my new bottle. One teaspoon of pure vanilla. Make sure it's pure. Don't be using that imitation stuff. Imitation vanilla is <laughs> yucky. It's Stir it in. It's made from wood pulp. And all vanilla, imitation or real, is fermented, guys. So please avoid the wood pulp, but just get the real stuff. We're going to put a half a teaspoon of baking soda in. Baking soda, it has amazing properties. You can use it in a lot of things. When I make soup, I put it in my soup. Okay. Now, we're going to get ourselves... Another, th another thing, and we're going to scrape off this because I don't want to. I don't want to waste any of it. Okay. And now we're going to get my pot holder, and we are going to pour this over the top of this. So you want to clean as much of it out as you can. You also need to work quickly because you do not want it to set up because it's getting cooled off. And then you're going to mix it as well as you can. You want to try to coat all your ingredients. And no, I'm not very good at this. You don't have to be good at it. It turns out good even if you're not good at it. It, it doesn't matter. So this is like, you can also, I, this is like making caramel, I mean, um, popcorn balls. It's made with caramel, same kind of technique. Okay. I think I have it mixed all the way to the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to put it in the, in the oven, just like this. You don't need to cover it, nothing else. You just, also recommendation, after you get through with this, bowl put it in the sink and put hot water in it that way you'll be able to clean it okay so we're going to put it in here on 300 and we're going to set a timer for 15 minutes alexa set a timer for 15 minutes okay i'm going to set this to the side so i can stir that later and let me get this guy in the in the sink real quick okay <clears throat> Real quick over here before we start making caramel apples. I've washed them. I dried them. I put the um, I put the little popsicle sticks or what tongue tongue depressors or chopsticks or whatever you want to use that you have. I did not remove the stems because they'll keep better if you don't remove the stems. These caramel apples, when you make them. You can put them in the refrigerator in a, in a, in a, in a, wrapped in plastic when you're done, and they'll keep for several weeks. So, guys. These apples don't look pristine because we went to Breezeland. It's an orchard near us, and we picked them. So they've never been graded. They've never been waxed. They're fresh. They're delicious. And they are pink lady. That's what I, I got. Think they're pink lady. I, think, I can't remember what kind they are. Oh, girl. They straight from the tree. They didn't have a tag. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember which ones I picked. Okay, I'm sorry. They had lots of apples, and I was like looking at all of them. I got the ones that were crisp, sweet, and tart. Okay, so those are the ones I chose. And um, you freeze them for 20 minutes. So why we're making the caramel sauce, they're going to be in the freezer. So these, babe, and you put them on parchment paper. So I'm going to take them. God, I hope I have someone to put them. <laughs> uh, yes, guys, I freeze a lot of stuff in my freezer. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Let's get on and make some caramel. So, for that, we need a medium kettle. 
In it, we're going to add one cup of salted butter, and we're going to melt it. You do need a candy thermometer. It is a must for what we're doing now. If you don't have a candy thermometer, it's best not to try to make caramel. You can buy them pretty cheaply on Amazon, your local grocery store, Walmart, almost anywhere. So we're going to put a cup of salted butter, not margarine. Once again, too much water content. You cannot use margarine. Um, basically, if, it's, if it tastes good, it's not good for you. Okay. This is going to be another one that has to be constantly stirred. So Carrie says that that's probably honeycrisp. Yes. They, I think they are. Yes, they are. They are honeycrisp. Oh, thank you, Carrie. Thank you so much for knowing what I bought when I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what we're going to add to this once the butter is done is we're going to add two cups of brown sugar, one cup of caro syrup, now, I'm going to tell you a little thing about caro syrup. When you open your caro syrup, if you do not use it within a month, you need to just trash it. It will not make candy after that. It just, for some reason, it just doesn't work well. Don't try to make pecan pies with it. It's not going to set up. You're going to be like beating your head on the wall. Just don't do it. Dark and light caro syrup, once open, should be used within a month's time. If not, throw it away. I know lots of people may disagree with me, but I'm telling you from experience, it's best just to do that. Thank you, Carrie, for the rose. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, guys. Okay, so we got our butter melting. And we're going to, uh, we need to melt it completely before we do anything else. And yes, I'm still impatient. I haven't found my patience since last week. It's still, it's still lit missing. Um, probably lost it when I had children. I don't know. Or maybe it's just, you know, me. I don't know. Um, I've been um, getting my yard ready for fall because up here in New England, we w so you never know when the snow is going to fly. And so this year I'm trying to be misprepared. I'm trying to get everything put away so that when I say, oh my goodness, it's going to freeze tonight, I'm not out there till midnight trying to get everything put away. So next week, we're supposed to have a frost, which means I am going to have to dig up everything that will die. Oh, kitty alert. Delilah the deadhead kitty. That's my kitty. She's a Siamese. She's seven pounds of fury. <laughs> She's adorable. She... She keeps my 150 pound dog in line. She's hilarious. She sits and rubs on him and she uses his front leg as a stripper pole. It's hilarious. I should record it, it's, but I'm usually laughing so hard when I see her doing it, I can't. <laughs> okay, our butter's melted enough. Now we're going to add to this two cups of brown sugar. Once again, brown sugar is the only thing you can pack. Guys, don't be packing your other stuff. Oh, your phone came undone. Here, you need me to plug it in? No. Okay, get my little thing here. And my brown sugar is mixed in good. Now, the reason you add caro syrup when you're making caramel is to keep your sugar from going grainy, okay? That's what keeps it from getting granular. Also, by stirring it in and keep stirring constantly, and don't be crazy. Don't be doing this. Constantly will make your, um, let me hold, I got to hold the, we got to plug in a thing, I came unplugged. Okay, <laughs> by constantly circling in a slow motion will help your caramel be creamy and not crystallize. And so it's a combination of using the um, caro syrup and the um, slow motion. So any candy that they make at a regular candy shop. Oh, guys, I went to a candy shop. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, <laughs> that's what they use to keep their candy from crystallizing and becoming um, yucky. Okay. So we're going to, oh, I need to add in the sweetened condensed milk. Look at this, guys. This is not a can. Is this not cool? It's resealable. Oh, Delilah alert. Delilah alert. She never. I know. She like loves it. She's and like, TikTok here, let me uh, 
the the center of the attention. I know. She's like a little, she is an attention person. Anyway, you can reseal it if you need it. But we need all 14 ounces of this. So I'm just going to put it in here. I don't think that's open. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's coming out. <laughs> it wasn't coming out there for a second. But look, guys, you can just roll it down and take it out. Is that not cool? That is the, that's the coolest. Yeah, that would be something I would do. <laughs> Looking out for you, Mom. Thanks, kid. <laughs> My children know me. I am like so accident prone. I'll be like, I want that. It's glass. And they're like, yeah, you don't need that. But I came home from um, yesterday from Salem with a new wine glass that says which something which. Anyway, and they were like, yeah, you need that. You keep breaking your wine glasses. Literally, we buy them by the dozens because I drop them and break them. But I, I don't like to drink out of anything but glass. I'm really weird. That's not weird. I mean, most, that's and it has to be, and it has, to, and it has to be thin lipped. I don't like that little lip on the side. I mean, it makes it makes it when you're drinking, it's like you have a hole in your lip. So notice, I could get all of it out. That's so super cool. This is the first time I found that, and I love it, guys. I'm just saying. Okay, now we need to cook this until it reaches two thirty-five. If I could read my handwriting, it would help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 235 to 270, which on your candy thermometer would be considered softball, softball candy stage. So we're going to um, put our little thermometer in here. Key on this, you do not want it to touch the bottom, okay? because that won't give you a true temperature. So you need to make sure it's not touching the bottom so that you get a true temperature of your candy, okay? Um, I love to make candy. Um, I don't think I'll make it on here because Divinity is very noisy. You have to mix it and stuff. But Divinity, you cannot make, you have to be really careful with it. You can't make it if it's rainy. You can't make it if it's cloudy. You can only have a sunny day. And it is the most delightful Christmas candy my grandmother used to make, and I love it, but it if you have a yucky winter, you will not be making it. Okay, we are currently at a whole 110 degrees. <laughs> it's right here. See, you can see it. Um, so this should take about 15 minutes, approximately. And then once we, once we get to that stage, we're going to remove it from the burner and we're going to put our vanilla in. So you notice you never, when you're making candy, vanilla is always added last when you remove it from heat. Um, I should have looked up why. I don't know why, because my grandmother did it that way and her grandmother did it that way. That's why I do it that way. Wait, how, what did you say? Vanilla is not added until you take it off the stove. It's never done on the heat when you're making candy. And I don't, I, I, like I said, I don't know why. So you can see this has a lovely color, but it's going to turn. See how it's kind of a light color? And once it gets to the right consistency, it will turn. And I may have to put my camera guy, guys, I may have to put my camera guy on um, stirring when I have <laughs> to stir the stuff in the oven. So for those of you that are watching up close, I'm sorry, you'll have to take a quick, quick break and, I'll try not to make you look at my wide backside too long. <laughs> so, Camp B says, because the vanilla flavor diminishes with heat. Oh, that makes complete sense. And you don't want to do that, guys. Vanilla is off. I do not like vanilla flavor straight up, but vanilla as an accent is very nice and it brings a lovely flavor. In fact, I am going to try to make some coffee Patron because, you know, they discontinued making it. And so I found a recipe I'm going to play with and try to make my own. And I actually was able to find a bottle <laughs> at this liquor store. This guy had it in the back room and he sold it to me so I can try the real stuff against mine and see how close it is. So right. that's a good idea. That is um, that is something I'm going to do. Um, I love coffee Patron. I don't drink it a lot, but every so often a shot is nice in a chocolate, dark chocolate cup. Oh, speaking of chocolate. Yes. This is what happens when I spend a day not doing anything I'm supposed to do. Um, I went to a chocolate factory 
And oh my goodness, guys, they had truffles and all kinds of stuff. And I got dark chocolate for me and I got some stuff for the girls and it's, it was delicious. And I was supposed to savor it over several days. And I ate it all with my cook, my coke, my um, coffee this morning, <laughs> one nibble and it was gone. <laughs> as soon as he, I got my piece of chocolate that you brought back, I ate it instantly. <laughs> yeah, yours had Nutella in it, right? Yeah. It yeah. Um, I don't like milk chocolate or white chocolate. I like dark chocolate only. I was really happy to hear that dark chocolate is good for cholesterol levels because, as we know, as we season, because on November 1st, I am seasoning another year into my life. Um, this year, I think I'm adding cayenne. Um <laughs> I have a enough spice. <laughs> a little spice. I have enough salt and pepper in me. I need that. <laughs> so we're gonna continue stirring in here. So this doesn't have a timer for this coffee. No, it's, it's just when it gets to the right temperature. We are currently at 180. And um hoping I don't burn it. I'm trying not to. I see something floating in there. I don't like that. Um, this is the first time to make caramel on for me to make caramel on a on my gas stove. I usually have had electric in the past. Well, we'll see. We'll just avoid it. Well, you know what? The beauty of TikTok is that we are the only ones that are going to taste it. <laughs> yes, we're the only ones that are going to taste it. It's not burnt. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, Maybe it's just, I don't know. Oh, that, see? Are you sure it's not burnt? Oh. Is it going to burn if you don't stir it? Yes. <laughs> Keep going. That's just, um, I think that if you would use a, he a heavier, I actually, when I moved, I downsized a lot of stuff because I own so much kitchen stuff. And so I need to get some new kettles that are heavier bottomed. And I think that's part of the problem because I consider this a cheap ass kettle, but um, I didn't, I don't, I need to get a new set because believe it or not, cook where I have the heat on low. Can you lower it more or is it not going to get No, if you lower it more, it's not going to get to the right temperature. It's already on low. I'm going to. If I see something float by, I'm going to, if you see something float by, remove. <laughs> and you know what the beauty of cooking is? You don't have to be perfect. You, anybody can cook, guys. And we've, everybody that's cooked, if someone tells you they've never messed something up, they're full of crap. Everybody's throwing an entire recipe in the trash can. Okay, I need you to stir this, please. Okay. carefully while I deal with this. <laughs> oh, you might want to show them that too. I'm both. <laughs> you guys, I have an awesome producer. Look how delicious Look that. that. Double I know, you're awesome. This smells delicious, looks delicious. So basically what you're break doing is breaking it up. The caramel's getting hot and it's, it's starting to go it doesn't always coat everything, but that's okay because um, then it gives you stuff to balance out the sweetness when you're eating it. Because we're gonna let it cool on a paint on parchment paper when it's done. So, if you wanted to coat every single inch, you could probably double the double the batch. But I like it like this because it gives me some that's not got caramel on it and some that does. And that's why I never went to cooking school because I don't really care what they think. I do what I want. And that's what I'm, I want you guys to know. You guys can cook. Anybody can cook. Change things. Make things your own. Don't let people tell you, oh, well, if you don't like pecans in your caramel crunch, fine. Put some peanuts. Put walnuts. Put anything you like. It's your candy. I like pecans just because that's the only nut I like. <laughs> well, other than a few of my crazy friends, but um, <laughs> or maybe I'm the nut and they're not. I'm not them. I don't know. So now, how close are we on temperature? Uh, we are almost to two hundred. Can you look over there and tell me what the temperature? I wrote up there in like really small letters, and my my eyes are like I can't read that. 
Yes. Um, it's on the side there next to the 14. 70? Is that 270 or 245? I think it's softball. I literally cannot read what language that is. <laughs> you want to stir it real quick? Yeah. Yeah, my writing's atrocious, guys. 235 to 240. Okay, that does not look like a 40. <laughs> that looks like a foreign language. That was a 40 <laughs> with a cat and two dogs helping me write. <laughs> One of which is my daughter, her dog. Thinks she's my dog every day during the day. She's your dog during the day and my dog during the night. And anytime she needs to go out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's that's true. True story. Oh, Alexis had a timer for fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. That fifteen minute timer is for our crunch that is in the oven. Yes. And if I cannot ruin the caramel, that would be good. No, that's caramel's kind of finicky. It is, and caramel sometimes will work and sometimes won't. And there, and it does have to do with humidity. And it's raining tonight. And it wasn't supposed to be, so I'm a little concerned. <laughs> but I like this. Is this will be thin, not real thick on the apples, which is what I like. So we're at 200. We have another 30 to 40 degrees to go which is just gonna be past softball stage. Softball meaning soft candy. So that's what caramel would be considered, softball. Softball Yeah, probably because I dropped caramel stuff on the counter on the stove. I'm gonna be chiseling caramel off the stove for like a week. <laughs> now what happens is I just like stick all these wet dish rags everywhere and let it soak and then I clean it. So now, what was I talking about? I don't know. I, I got consumed with this. Okay, so you're freezing the apples. So when you dip your caramel, apples and the caramel will stick to them and harden. Then you're going to put them in the refrigerator after we dip them. Curious about that. Also, Carrie is asking, did you use one cup of carol or a half? One cup. One cup of carol. So this is one cup of butter, two cups of brown sugar, sugar, sugar <laughs> and one cup of light corn syrup and 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk. So this, so that you can make it. So if you're like me, and obviously I'm not stirring fast enough because I'm getting little spots. It's not burnt, but it's like little brown pieces coming up. I'm going to take those out or go around them so they don't get on my caramel apples. As long as it doesn't burn, it's not gonna affect your flavor. But as soon as it burns, your candy is goner. The only place it's going to be is in the dump. So we've all done that. For anyone that says they haven't, hats off to you. I don't believe you. <laughs> hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. My grandmother used to make candy, and I, that's who I learned to make candy from. And she, she told me every good cook has lost a batch of something. So... Um, but you don't want it to burn. So I'm looking at the pieces I've taken out. They're light brown, which tells me it's just this kettle. So try to use a heavy bottom, like a cast iron with enamel, enamel heavy, anything like that with enamel or heavy. Um, <laughs> or if you have an electric stove, you probably wouldn't have as much trouble. I like gas, but this is my first time to cook candy on gas. <laughs> Should have tried it before I did it with you guys. No, this is fine. <laughs> so we're getting close. Let's see. We are currently at two ten. And what is our goal? Two. I would say two forty. Oh, we have a cat trying to stop the live stream on YouTube. She's a uh, she's a, a menace tonight. I know she is upset. Probably because I'm not sitting down. Oh, that could be. You could sit on the stool if you want to. Okay. It's going up slowly. It's better if it go, your candy goes up slowly than if it shoots up. If it shoots up, that's not good. That's a good way to get crystallization, um, burning. Um, just not good. And you can kind of see our caramel is starting to change colors, not the floating specks, guys. Ignore those. Put on rose glasses and ignore them. 
I, I have see that many. I think they're coming from where I can't stir with the um, thermometer. Yeah. It, it, the spot's kind of off center. I think that's where they come in from, from behind my, um, also I found that, um, pot, pots on a gas stove have a tendency to, um, when they have sugar or butter on the sides of them, they have a tendency to burn, burn on the gas stove. No matter what you do, you can stir too hard. I used to yell at my husband about it because he always makes my Jesus sauce when I'm doing other stuff, when we're having spaghetti or whatever, or pizza. And so while he's making it, I always yell at him because he burns the kettle. Well, one time I decided to make it myself and it, it wasn't his fault. It was our stove <laughs> and the kettle we have. But I am so picky when I buy stuff, when I buy, um, st oh, guys, I'm going to tell you about, I'm very picky when I buy stuff. I research it. And I just had to replace my, um, yeah, this has been the year of appliance death. I had to replace my um, air fryer. And so I, my husband doesn't like the knobs that turn. So I got a Ninja Pro. Oh, that thing is a doll. It's wonderful. You can dehydrate in it. You can cook in it. You can reheat. I love the reheat setting. I put a pot pie in there and turned it on. And it went, went 30 minutes. It was perfect. It wasn't burnt. It wasn't hard. It wasn't soggy. Oh, guys, it was wonderful. So if you want, an, if you want a good, and also fits like a 12-pound turkey. How in the heck? Anyway, I got it. And I, I, and then I was like, where am I going to put it? I have no counter space. So I found an antique electric shop cabinet. It's hilarious. I love it. There it is. There's my baby. <laughs> I know I'm a little, I love antiques. I've also just about narrowed down my color selection. We are at 220. We have about 20 more degrees to go. Um, but I am decided that I'm going to do the, Cabinets in a fern sagey green. And I'm going to do the walls in a lighter green. I'm going to do the ceiling, which I'm going to put metal. I want to put metal on, but it's probably going to be PVC reproduction because the metal is astronomical. And yeah, I'm not a millionaire. And so I'm going to do it a cream color. So I'm really excited that I finally am making a choice on the paint after being here almost going on a year and a half okay we are getting better getting closer i have this bad feeling that everything's going to come out at the same time that's usually how it goes isn't it yes we're at 220 we're creeping up towards 230 um, patience is a virtue when you're making candy and, um, I like to put on good music. One of my favorite bands, I have two favorite bands, Blackberry Smoke. They're awesome. If you haven't heard them, go, go get a, go listen to them. They're great in concert. And my other second favorite band of all time is the Rolling Stones. So I love those. I love to cook to the, their music. It makes life go by. Or I listen to murder podcasts because I like murder. <laughs> because, you know, it's nice to live vicariously and not actually commit murder. Oh <laughs> so, you know, it's good to read about it. So I enjoy murder mysteries and things like that in my free time. And I listen to murder podcasts a lot when I'm cooking. But that might be why that might be why I get it messed up sometimes. But I usually okay. Another comment I'm going to make: cooking is is an art. Okay, baking and candy making is science. You must follow the rules. You must do what they say. You must do it in the steps they say. It's not about what you want. You cannot dump everything in here, as we heard from one of our viewers. Vanilla loses its flavor if you put it into your candy. There is a reason. <laughs> With heat. Um, but that's, so you have to follow it. That's why when grandma makes her cookies, they're nice and fluffy. And when you make yours, they're nice and flat because grandma would let her butter and eggs come to room temperature. You, on the other hand, put it in the microwave. Don't do that. No. No, you will have flat, greasy cookies. 
If you like flat greasy cookies, more power to you. I like grandma's fluffy cookies with nice melty choc dark chocolate chips in it. Oh, okay, let's get off the chocolate chip cookies. I like chocolate chip I know, cookies. I like you're going to make chocolate chip cookies on these live. I know, but guys, I only like them straight out of the oven. Once they cool, I don't want to eat them. <laughs> Yuck. That's why you have children. I know, the kids, the neighbors. My neighbor, one of my neighbors, her husband sent a message through her to me the other day. She's my, uh, she does with the re drink reviews with me, but he was out of sweets and I needed to make him something. So I guess count, he's going to get some caramel crunch. Okay, we are getting close to 2.30. Not in the afternoon, 230 degrees Fahrenheit, not centigrade. Um, candy thermometers do not go to 230 degrees centigrade, so I am talking Fahrenheit. I guess I should have said that because some people may not be where they use Fahrenheit measurements. That is a bad assumption. It's looking good. It is. It's looking better now that you, I, I think shifting it it doesn't have those burn marks anymore yeah the burn marks are the ones that have been in there the little floaties are mm -hmm. the ones that have been in there but it's definitely getting the color oh and guys you should smell it <sighs> smells good it smells like caramel <laughs> my whole kitchen is starting to smell like caramel so we're getting there getting there my arm is going to fall off before i finish this you just got a lot of mosquitoes I know, I know. Okay, okay so day. I'm going to tell you when we get ready to dip it, I bought the Heath crunched up that you can put in cookies. We're going to pour it in a jar. And then I got mini, I mean in a bowl. And then I got mini dark chocolate chips. And I have pecans that I toasted that are ch um, pieces. And we'll mix those together. So when we dip our apple, then we'll dip them in there and that'll be our, our little bottom. You can use anything you want. You could use sprinkles, but I'm like, uh, give me something with dimension. Someone said it looks like gravy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Like it does look like brown gravy. It does. It doesn't smell like brown gravy though. No, it doesn't. It does not smell like brown gravy. And if your gravy is doing like this is in the bubbles, you've done something wrong with your gravy. <laughs> Not to mention you would never cook your gravy this long at this much of a boil. Your milk would be scalded. We are strand. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something else about candy. You strand at the last 5 to 10 degrees. It seems to take forever. Kind of like when you're using the smoker and you're smoking something and it gets up there and it's five degrees away when you're making pulled pork and you're like, oh, that's going to go really fast. Oh, no, it could be like an hour or two. You know, not this. This is not going to take an hour or two, but I, I'm, I'm liking it to that same kind of thing. Feels like it. Yes, I feel like I feel like I need like one of those um, inventions that is like a hand that stirs for me. They actually have one of those. Yeah, they don't, so I don't work. Know if it would work for, for caramel. I don't think it works well, personally. I I think you should do everything yourself. I'm a real do it yourself kind you of have person. A sand mixer, two sand mixers over there, she says. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, but those, you know. Yeah, I I do I'm a weird person. There's certain things I use certain things for, and I don't use them for any I don't use other things for certain things. So, <laughs> I don't know. Like the microwave, I don't really cook in my microwave. I melt butter. Um, if I can reheat it on the stove or the oven or in the air fryer, I'm going to because I don't, I think microwaves turn stuff to rubber. There's enough rubber in the world. I don't need to be eating it. Okay, we're just slightly over 230. And as you can see, the caramel's getting a better texture. And guys, please don't use wrapples on your carameled apples to make carameled apples with. Gross. I don't make candied apples because none of us like them. Um, they stick to your teeth really bad. And I am going to tell you all this candy stuff I'm making right now, my husband won't eat because he won't eat anything that's sticky. <laughs> he won't eat marshmallows. I know. He's, he's weird. But that's his thing. But you know what? I don't eat seafood and I don't eat beef and I don't eat pork. So 
you know, each town in my family, everybody gets to eat what they want to eat because I don't eat a lot of things. So I try not to force them to eat things. Boy, we're stranded. We're stranded. Is it just not wanting to go up? Yeah, I'm going to have to turn it up a little. I'm going to turn it up just a fraction. We're stranded at 230. And it has to get past that point to be right. Also, you want it, you don't want it to get stranded too long on a temperature because then it also will make it go grainy, even though we did do the caro syrup to protect against that. And we've been stirring. But you have to follow the rules of the road. Or you, you know, um, you can always sit on a stool and do this if you're at home. Yeah, it's not as bad if you're not on a live. Yeah, if you're not on a live. <laughs> oh, stop. can you please stir that? We're going to move, remove the caramel crunch. And poor Izetta is going to be stirring that because I have to put this out on a pan. Okay, caramel crunch out. And hold on a second. I'm going to get a pan and put some parchment paper on it. Why is that is over there stirring and filming? Okay, got our parchment paper on there. Then you're going to take this and you're going to dump it out. Sorry, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, sorry, YouTube. You'll be able to see it in a minute. Okay, and then we're just going to break it up. And we're going to sit it over here to cool. Doesn't that look delicious, guys? I want to steal a piece, but I'm not going to because I know it'll burn my mouth. Okay, let's put this to the side. Oh, run away. Run away, pretzel and pe pe pecan. We don't want to lose you. There you go. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I think it is getting closer. Yeah, we are right at 235 to 240. I'm going to kiss up to 240. Yes, let's turn it off. I want it to kiss up to 240 because I do know that if you don't get close enough, you will not, it won't set well. So we're getting close. I lied about how long this would take. That's okay. It really depends on your stove your kettle, your patience level, the weather. And you can see it's changed color. See how yeah. it's gotten the brown color? Earlier exactly. it was more tan, and now it's more of a caramel color. The color you want to be in the summer or all year round. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're close enough to 240. We're about 239. I'm going to remove it and bring it over here. Remove my thermo candy thermometer. Be careful, candy thermometers break easy. Where I put the vanilla? There it is. Okay, we are going to add to this one teaspoon of vanilla. She's my poor assistant and slash daughter. <laughs> okay, stir in your vanilla. Now, I'm going to do this first before I go get it. I have my little heath chunks. There's something in my bowl that I didn't see from the dishwasher. I'm going to pour some in there. And then these cute little semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm going to add some of those. Don't get the big ones. They'll be too big. Add some pecans, and this is going to make our turtles. Because anybody doesn't like turtles shouldn't be trusted. Okay, let me get the apples. That I've now put into a complete. My honey crisp. Who are who are not very pretty. They're pretty enough. They look like for caramel Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put them in here. You're going to make sure you cover them completely. Roll. Roll. Get it up there and then let it drip. 
Look at that, guys. That is beautiful. Okay. And then you put it in your whatever bottom you want to put on it. That's good enough. And you put it on your thing. And these are not perfect apples, so you're going to see that they're not going to sit straight up. But you know what? They're going to have better flavor than those ones that come up from the store. Oh, that's pretty. I know. Who wouldn't want that? I know. I don't know what her problem is. Okay, kind of roll them around. If you want the caramel via more up top, you can do this. But I don't really care. I think it's fine to have not as much. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do some plain also? Yeah. And then we're going to do a plain one. You can. This will probably make about 15 apples, but I didn't buy that many. So we're gonna... Also, the caramel, guys, when you can cool it, you can put it in a container. Do not put it in a glass container because it does contain milk. Um, but you can put it in a, a plastic container, let it cool completely, and put it in the freezer for up to three months, and then you can microwave, heat it up, and use it. Um, when the glass gets, when the um, caramel freezes, it expands and it'll break the glass. Oh, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Guys, I'm sorry. I'm full of tips that I never remember. I just do them. <laughs> I've been cooking since I could reach the counter, so here we go. There's probably going to be a fight in the house for which apple they want. Isn't that pretty? Looks delicious, even with little brown speckles in it. I was just thinking it kind of looks like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> We're making caramel apples, not peanut butter. <laughs> you can also put coconut, marsh. You can chop up marshmallows, whatever you want. But I find that this is a much prettier stuff. What well, I'm using? Don't have very many people that like coconut. No. In this house anymore. <laughs> yeah, you could do coconut and um, chocolate chips and have like almond joy. Yeah. Um. So you could do pretty a lot of different things. Or you can things. really take, I feel like you could take any candy bar, like a Twix, and just chop it up. And yes, any it. candy, almost anything you can think of, you can chop up and put on top of, ooh, I got a little carried away there. Look at that side there. <laughs> we got a little happy. <laughs> okay, guys, now they're going to go in the refrigerator until they completely cool. And I see that I missed some of the top, so I'm going to just take some caramel and just put it in here. I know it's not going to be as pretty if I as I did the those last ones, but nobody cares. Okay, I'm going to try my caramel crunch. I'm not going to cry the caramel apples because they're going to take a while to cool. Once they're completely cool, you can package them in plastic and keep them in the refrigerator for several weeks. They will keep, okay? Um, not that they're going to last that long. So let's try this. Let's see if it's as good as I, oh, I know. Let's see. Oh. Okay, this is going with me. <laughs> Nobody else. No, it's perfect. Let's see. Not. Mm. Okay, guys. Um, I'm gonna take this and leave. You can talk to my producer from now on. I'll see you later. <laughs> Have a great evening. I'll see you on November first. Thank you guys for watching. Bye bye.